All right. Mark Breland, the trainer of Deontay Wilder, says Tyson Fury ain't going to be able to make their February fight. Let's talk about that and what it means if he does make it and if what it means if he doesn't make it in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel, subscribers. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. And also, I want to thank you for the support and the encouragement from the people that watch this video. And a special thank you to the people that watch to the end and leave comments so that we can talk about it. When you watch it all the way to the end, then you'll actually know what my point is. And you're very, very val. I really, really appreciate when you guys do that. Also, thank you. Special thanks to everybody that supports and comes to the live streams that we do, especially OG Boxing Talk, Sunday morning, 8 a.m. And also uh, with KQKC, Blood Boxing, and Curtis Anderson. And also thank you to everybody that's a the member of the Patreon over, but not over at Finance Boxing, and, excuse me, uh, Business and Politics. Now, let's get into this. Ah, the heavyweight division, the heavyweight division. Deontay Wilder, world WBC champion, longest reigning champion in all of in all of boxing. He is a nine time defending champion. He's defended his championship nine times. Uh, He's been a champion since 2015. In my book, he's the number he has to be the top heavyweight in the world because all the champions, there's been so many champions to come and go since he won. It's ridiculous. From Tyson Fury to Charles Martin to Anthony Joshua to Joseph Joseph Parker. These guys, Andy Ruiz has come. He ain't gone yet. But if he loses to Anthony Joshua, he would have gone too. You got five guys, at least five guys that have come and gone all in during the same time which this guy has held this belt. The one semi, the only semi funny thing that he's got on his record is a draw that he got against Tyson Fury. Now, Tyson Fury, and he were going into a rematch. Tyson Fury pulls out of the rematch and doesn't, uh, you know, and goes over to ESPN under the under the claim that they're going to work to make the rematch bigger. Well, you know, a funny thing happens when, you know, you drop a bird and go chase two in a bush. Uh, funny things happen, like big six inches gashes over the top of your head and a very um, rough and tumble fight with a guy that was supposed to be easy money. That happened when he when he faced Otto Valin of, I do believe he's uh, from Sweden. He's Sweden of the ne- Netherlands, a, basically a marginal fighter that came in and busted up Tyson Fury something fierce. Now Tyson Fury is just, man, talking about a- insult and injury. Not only did he get his eye busted up and cut up, he also, it all came out that he only had 35, he only sold 3,577 tickets to his fight. So he's busted up. This myth of him being popular is falling apart. And the only thing that they really got to swing on is a draw against Deontay Wilder in some mythical title that he doesn't really even have a very firm right to claim. Mark Breland says, with all this in mind, Mark, and specifically with the cut in mind, Mark Breland says, look, Tyson Fury ain't going to be ready. He's going to have to take at least a year off with that cut. Now, Tyson Fury saying that he's going to be ready. People are going to say that he's going to be ready. But now Mark Breland, who in the thing of Mark Breland is a trainer or the co-trainer. I'm not sure which one his title is of Deont- of Deontay Wilder. But he's also a former welterweight champion. He is one of the most decorated amateurs in the history of the U.S. amateur program and uh, is pretty much the most experienced boxing mind in Deontay Wilder's camp and and definitely one of the most experienced in the world, considering the amount of championship fights that he's had, that he's that he's trained people for and his success in the amateurs. Mark Breland is Mark Breland knows what he's talking about. So when he says, no, it's going to take him about a year to get that cut right, what he's doing is he's echoing what Andre Ward said, which was, don't take that fight that soon. Your eye is still going to be, that that cut is still going to be 
It's still going to be pink. It's still going to be swollen. And as soon as Deontay Wilder hits it, that is going to open up. And Deontay Wilder is going to target that eye if you do that. Now, what's the significance of this? If they delay that fight, if he has to take a year to get back in the ring from that injury, you can you can almost for sure kiss that Deontay Wilder fight goodbye. And let me tell you why. If he sits out a year, he's not going to sit out a year and go straight to Deontay Wilder. If he sits out a year, he's going to have to get another tune up because he's been out of the ring for a year. Also, being out of the year, out of the ring and not active for a guy like Tyson Fury is extremely, extremely dangerous. One of the things that that uh, Big John Fury, sometimes I mess up Peter Fury and John Fury. I do believe that Peter Fury is the uncle and the father of Huey Fury and John Fury is the father of Tyson Fury. Um, if I got that mixed up, please, please forgive me. No disrespect to, the, to, to them. Um, but what the father of Tyson Fury said was that he thought Tyson Fury looked weak as a baby. He looked overtrained and he thought that his corner, he needs somebody more experienced in his corner because, you know, these guys, you know, like these guys don't know what they're doing and they're going to ruin Tyson Fury's career. Now, here's the here's the catch 22. Here's the rock in a hard place. And if you don't understand what rock in a hard place is, a rock is hard and a hard place is hard. So if you go one way or the other way, it's going to you're going to knock your head up against something hard. That's what stuck between a rock and a hard place means. They're stuck between a rock and a hard place because if they if they if they train, if Tyson Fury stays in the gym, keeps going to the train gym, keeps working out, keeps working out, keeps working out. Right. He can overtrain. He can be drained. Right. He can leave it all in the gym is what his father said. It looked like he left it all in the gym. But if they don't do that, then he might leave it all at the pub. He might leave it. He might leave it all with his dealer. If he's not actively working out and focused, he can easily relapse into some foolishness that he is prone to get into. There is a lot of talk about how he has changed his life, how he overcame all this stuff. Once you become, once you are habitual, you are habitual. Okay. That's what they say addic addicts are. That's a habit, right? Addiction is a habit and it's a habit you cannot break. That's, that's what a habit is. And habitual, there are people who are habitual at working out. That's what they do. They think about it all the time. It is, they don't feel right if they can't do it. So Tyson Fury being somebody that is prone to to habitual to to being habitual got to pick one are you going to replace your habit with exercise and overtrain or are you going to relax on that and then maybe you know the chances of you slipping back there overdo it so the combination of Tyson Fury um not being in the gym for a year and the fact that and that can possibly lead to all kind of craziness and the fact that he would at least have to have a tune-up and the way he does it, two tune-ups before that fight happens. If he's got to sit out a year, a fight with Deontay Wilder might not happen for a year and a half, might not happen for two years. And on top of it, the fact that Tyson Fury doesn't sell any tickets is not a particularly, is not a particularly fight, uh, is not a particularly popular fighter. And there's a bunch of other, you know, fish to fry for Deontay Wilder. Man, all of that is a recipe for this fight not happening. My opinion is that Tyson Fury messed up. A bird in the hand, that's why I used that earlier, earlier on in the conversation. A bird in the hand is worth two in a bush. He had a bird in the hand. He had a rematch with Deontay Wilder that he could have taken right away. He would have had one training camp and went right back at it. It was going to be a pay-per-view fight. The last pay-per-view did about 350,000 pay-per-view. And I see how you UK dudes, y'all always want to cut numbers in half. Okay, 
350,000 pay-per-view, a very good show. The second one was probably going to do a lot better. Could have done five, six, seven hundred thousand 700,000 pay-per-views. They would have made a ton of money. They would have answered the question, if Tyson Fury could have won the fight, then Tyson Fury by now would already be a legitimate champion and they wouldn't have to, and they wouldn't have to, um, manufacture some title for him or pull one, pull some, pull some mythical thing and mythical, you know, means myth. Myths are not true. They are stories that represent principles, right? The myth of the lineal champion out dust it off and act as if it's some legitimate, tangible and concrete thing. They wouldn't have to do that. Or Tyson Fury would have been knocked out by Deontay Wilder and hey man, he could go on and, you know, live his life, man, because he would have made all the money he needed to make in one fight. So, you know, it's going to be what it's going to be. But Mark Breland saying that, um, co-signing what, in a way, largely co-signing what Andre Ward said about how Tyson Fury doesn't need to take that thing, take that right away. You know, what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that Tyson Fury is... Camp is going to do what his dad said, uh, what John Fury said, and ruin his career. Throw his ass back out there with Deontay Wilder with an eye that ain't healed, with an eye that ain't healed and drained. Anyway, it is what it is. Let me know what you think, though, in the comment section. And again, if you've listened this far, you are truly valuable to the to the channel. Thank you, thank you very much, and I'll catch you on the next video. And with that, I'm out. Peace.